and you guys you can see that in the description of this video we are indeed supporting nerdrotic so for those that do not know there was a copyright strike made against his channel for an unlisted video apparently uh, based off of an image that he had in that video which is totally under protection for fair use so somehow some way some a uh, third party ended up getting a copyright strike against his channel, which, because YouTube sucks and has no protections for content creators, means that his content, means that his video streaming, his live streaming, has now been disabled for three months, and also that video has been forced to be taken down. He's lost all revenue from it as well, too. So... Basically, what that means is that now he is live streaming from a new channel. So, Valkyrie, if you could please post the link to his new channel. Go give him some love. Go give him some subs. Just keep in mind, once you get to 1,000 subs on that new channel, that doesn't mean he's automatically re-monetized on that channel. He's using that channel for now to live stream until all this stuff is cleared up. Hopefully, it gets cleared up soon. But if you've been following YouTube at all, you know that YouTube will take its sweet-ass time to try and help anyone out because they do not care. They do not allocate resources to helping people out. They do not want to set up a system that will help out the regular, everyday content creator because that would require too much work on their part. So they're not going to do that. So in the meantime, go support Gary. Go support Nadrotic. He's an awesome dude, an awesome channel. I was actually on that. I was on a stream with him earlier on his new channel trying to get more people over there. I've been tweeting about it. I've been again doing everything that I possibly can. So Valkyrie, please spam the chat with the link to the new Nadrotic channel. Go subscribe over there. Give him some love. Give him some support. Leave some comments on any of the live streams that might be public now at this point because he really needs to know that we care about his content we want more of his content and we also think that this entire situation is wrong and stupid i'm going to be talking to him maybe today or a little bit tomorrow about setting up Streamlabs because i know that Streamlabs has been an amazing thing for me and i think that it will be a major help to him while he's kind of in this in-between process or if for some reason today tomorrow everything comes back that's great but if it ever happens again which based on everything that's happened recently with other channels seems like it's going to be a more common occurrence especially also we have article 13 being passed recently in the european union as well things might not be getting much better for youtubers down the line and content creators down the line either so we are indeed going to be living in some very interesting times so go support gary go support the support the nerdrotic channel nerdrotic.com is how you get easy access to him you can find the links to his podcast to his videos everything that you might need to contact him is there and i'm sure my valkyries are doing an amazing job dropping those links so thank you thank you thank you um, Alex says, so glad you're with Nerdrotic. Absolutely, man. I, seriously, I, as I've shown you on previous streams, I listen to the guy almost daily. Whenever there's a podcast available, whenever he's made one of his live streams into a podcast, I am listening to it to and from work. It's one of my priority things. There's other podcasts that I listen to. Gary's gets priority because I think that he is just that knowledgeable on these things that I care a lot about when it comes to Marvel Comics having him him having worked in the comics industry selling comics he knows what it's like he knows what people buy he knows when people stopped buying and he knows the market in general and it was been able to by watching his videos by watching and listening to his streams, that's how I learned a little bit more about how the MCU is very much at this point in time mirroring and mimicking what is going on in Marvel Comics. And if you don't know what's going on in Marvel Comics right now, it has gone down the dumps. Now, a lot of that has to do with the breaking point for all that, as he's made very clear, was the SJWisms being brought into Marvel Comics. We're starting to see something similar happen into the MCU, and that's the reason why I've said clearly before, Endgame is not just a movie, it is the end of a saga by their own volition. They've already admitted that this is the end of the Infinity Saga. The question is, what's the next saga? Who's going to lead that next saga? And is it going to be enough to be able to bring in not only new fans, but also to maintain the fans that have been around for the past 11 years? That is the number one question i have some serious doubts if their decision is to go with captain marvel and many other characters who they've tried and tested in the comics several times now and have always failed so anyway thank you very much so thank you guys for your support of nerdrotic because he is an awesome dude seriously i cannot wait i'm so excited i found out just yesterday that he was going to star Wars celebration so excited to be able to finally meet him in person me him and jeremy are going to be the straight edge society up there <laughs> and it's so great because all of us come from just bit different backgrounds but we all are going to be sharing that one thing in common with each other, and it's going to be awesome. So I can't wait to meet him and just to have a conversation with him in person because he's awesome. He's sad. I mean, it's sad that that was like the first time to, to be on his channel was under those circumstances, but 
I obviously would have him on my channel anytime, and I would love to be on his channel anytime because he seriously is awesome, and he deserves your love, your subscribe, and just your support. It, Mary uh, Ashmead, what's going on? Mary says, thank you so much, Odin. Uh, Gary needs all the help he can get. Absolutely. And I, as he's, he made very clear, he's not in any financial straits at this point, but it is also still uh, taking away a major part of his channel. I mean, not only does he make videos, but he also has a live stream schedule, and having it be gone you know, theoretically for three months is not a good thing. And so therefore I will do everything that I can to try and help him through that process because yes, as Yivo just said in the chat, that is completely BS. Matthew Mattinson, uh, Matthew Mattinson says, it's Nerdrotic Live. Thanks, Odin. No problem. Again, Nerdrotic Live is the new channel. And as I said to the Valks, please go ahead and post that link to that new channel. Boom. Thank you so much for posting all those links. Go give him some love and support. He deserves it. Um, Anthony Aguiar or Anthony Aguirre says, hello, Odin. Hello, Anthony. How are thou, Zach Greg? What's going on, Zach? How's it going? Sli uh, Slicer Neon says, please tell the channel isn't named new, uh, nudrotic sounds sketchy. No, 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 no nudrotic there. It is simply Nerdrotic Live because it is obviously still his same personality. It is everything else the same. It's just that he cannot stream. He is not allowed to stream on his channel with all of those subscribers, which is what really sucks is because now there's a lot of people on his channel that don't know and can't follow it because some people only really know and only really follow the, the live streams. And so basically cutting his ability to do that really does cut to the heart of him and many other YouTubers as well. People who are uh, much more stream heavy or are very set and scheduled on their streams, like Nerdrotic, like, you know, for example, for me, if I was put in a position where my, you know, for some reason my channel was striked and I couldn't live stream, you know, obviously I have my Welcome to Asgard channel that I could go to as well, but it, it makes it very difficult. It really does because, yeah, you could say, oh, I could go live stream over there, but you know that just as anyone else. If you say, hey, guys, go over to this stream, it's a lot harder to gain the traction of the people that you may have had on your own channel versus trying to get people to move over. So that's why it is very important for us to support him during this time period. Um, Zen Water says, what exactly is Article 13? That is a great question. One of the reasons why I have it in the title is because it passed today, but also because there's been a lot of YouTubers that have talked about it and have tried to uh, basically describe what it is. And so according in the most brief way possible, Article 13 refers to Article 13 of the uh, Constitution of Singapore, which prohibits banishment and guarantees freedom of movement. No. Um, freedom of movement. Article 13 of the proposed European Union Directive on Copyright in the Digital Marketplace, which would expand legal liability for websites. All right, so let's let us get here. There, there. That's the one that we want. Not the one on human rights. This one right here. All right. <clears throat> Article 13 replaces the mere conduit exemption from copyright infringement for, from for-profit online content sharing service providers with a new conditional exemption to liability. These conditions are a claimed implementation of effective and proportionate measures to prevent the availability of specific unlicensed works identified by rights holders, acting expediously to remove them and demonstrating that best efforts have been made to prevent their future availability. The article also extends any licenses granted to content hosts to their users as long as those users are not acting on a commercial basis. The article directs member states to consider the size of the provider, the amount of content uploaded, and the effectiveness of the measures imposed in light of technological developments. It also mandates an appeals process and requires content hosts to share information on the use of content with the content's owner, the lack of which has been point of contention in the past. Article 13's provisions target commercial web hosts, which store and give the public access to a large amount of works or other subject matters uploaded by its users, which they organize and promote for for-profit purposes. The proposal makes explicit that this does not include private cloud storage services, non-profit encyclopedias like Wikipedia, nor non-profit educational scientific repositories. Article 13b requires websites which automatically reproduce or refer to a significant amount of copyright protected visual works to conclude fair and balanced licensing, licensing agreements with any requesting right holders. Article 13 was renamed to Article 17 in the final Trilog draft issued in February 2019. 
to put vote to uh, to put a vote by parliament. So basically, what it does is that it affects people who create content. It creates and makes things a lot more hell for anyone that tries to do any type of con of uh, copyrighted content. So think about what Nerdrotic, what happened in Nerdrotic, and how that the claim that was made against them, the false claim that was made against them. They've now just made it a lot easier. That's the reason why. You know, a lot of YouTubers in the UK especially have been freaking out about this because basically it allows for more unilateral action against individuals, YouTube channels, uh, individual sites because of various uses of things. It kind of does away a little bit with the fair use. Again, I'm not an expert on this at all, so there might be someone who has a better explanation to this, but it just looks like it gives more power to the governing body, which is, in this case, the, uh, the EU. Again, the European Union. So that is the breakdown of that. Uh, Random Nerd of Doom. Odin, how do we defeat Article 13? Um, yeah, for starters, if you're in a country that's in the EU, you should probably get out. <laughs> that's obviously a very complex answer. But really what it comes down to is you have a, you know, uh, the EU, which is a, you know, the European Union, which is a collaboration of various countries that are all under a singular government also having their own independent governments and this is the reason why international law and this is the reason why international bodies scare me because if you give them too much power and then they have the force and the ability to go into any country no matter what that country's laws might be and have an impact on them that is scary so european union reminds me a lot of what the future might look like if we are under the control of indeed some type of worldwide government order, which I don't want. I think my favorite part of Article 13 is not only 12 hours later news dropped Sweden voted for it by accident. To all Europeans, I'm sorry, stay strong. Wait, what? How do you vote for something by accident? How does that happen? Dear Lord. Super says, and what's worse is the head of YouTube already said that if Article 13 goes through as planned, they're just going to pull out of Europe, period, because they can't afford the risk. So that is the other reason why, and that is the reason why so many UK YouTubers were speaking out against it. Because, as he just said, YouTube planned to pull out of Europe. YouTube, this giant corporation, think about all of the UK streamers, all the, all the streamers that are a part of the EU itself. That is a very bad, bad, bad thing because that limits voices. It makes things a lot harder for those voices. And so I hope we see a fight against this because it is going to cause a lot of chaos, especially if YouTube does indeed go forward and pull out. Super says, my comment got skipped. In a nutshell, Article 13 can override copyright law. It makes creators and their hosts responsible for any copyrighted shared content. Exactly right, which means that YouTube becomes more liable in that situation, which means people can take YouTube to court, which is why YouTube would much, would much rather take themselves out of the entire country than have to deal with it because of the risk factor, because that is what they would have to be dealing with. So it's, it's insane. It absolutely is insane. Uh, so super, thank you very much for that. See, that's how you do it. See, super says my comment was skipped because he's following along in the chat. He knows when his chat was put out there. He says, wait a minute, this didn't happen. Okay, now I can put my chat out there. Again, super understands the game. Super understands and knows how to ask the questions and how to repeat his questions. So one more time, because it was a very good comment, what Article 13 does is it overrides copyright law, making creators and their hosts responsible for any copyrighted shared content. It changes the entire game.